Residents of the small American city of Flint, Michigan, are living in an ongoing environmental disaster. Their water supply has been contaminated. I'm afraid of the water. You know, shouldn't be afraid of your tap water. With the crisis into its third year, tens of thousands of people can't drink their tap water. And many don't dare cook or bathe with it either. Many people think that the Flint story is over, that it's taken care of. It's not. We are still very much in the middle of this crisis. There's been widespread lead contamination and concerns about disinfection chemicals and bacterial illnesses in the water. We're still having issues with rashes. We're still having the headaches. I mean, nothing's changed. If anything, it's gotten worse. There's disbelief that this could happen in America. Flint has become a byword for national shame. I'm gonna make sure that the leaders at every level of government don't rest until every drop of water that flows to your homes is safe to drink. The city remains under a state of emergency, and there's no end in sight to this crisis. Flint, Michigan is home to 100,000 people. After 30 years of economic decline, more than a third live in poverty. One in six houses have been abandoned. And there's not even a full service grocery store here. Now, they're dealing with poison water. Testing for lead and other toxins has become a regular part of life for Mari Kopany and her mother Lulu. We turn it on cold, we fill it up to half an inch from the top. Their whole family has been exposed. We've had a lot of testing. So far we know that there is a certain amount of chloroform in the water. We know that there is, or at one time there was high concentrations of lead in our water. We know that our house has exceptionally high levels of chlorine, but there's always that doubt in my mind that there might be something more. Scientists from Virginia Tech tested homes and discovered dangerously high lead levels in the summer of 2015. By last October, the people of Flint were finally warned by Michigan health officials to stop drinking water from their taps. Here, get in the car. They'd already been consuming contaminated water for 18 months by then. Now, this is what Mari and Lulu and all of Flint's residents have to do to get clean water. Every ward has a water pod now, which is short for a point of distribution site of where you can go for water and supplies and filter replacements and such. It only takes a few minutes for Lulu and Mari to drive to their local pod. Ma'am, how are you? I'm good, how are you? You cycle back for it? Thank you, darling. Good. Okay, um, how many wires can I get through then? Um, could I get 12, please? Yeah. But this unwelcome routine is getting old. Bye. <laughs> We've been in a state of emergency since January. Honestly, I'm sick of hauling water. I'm fed up with it. It's already enough you have to use gas to go get it. It's a non-stop, never, it's frustrating. It really is.
And so as that switch was made, and as the water chemistry was not correct, it then caused some lead to leach out of service lines and fixtures in Flint, Michigan. Residents were forced to stay on the contaminated water until October last year, when officials finally switched the supply back to Lake Huron. But the damage had been done. We still cannot drink water that is um, from our taps. It is still contaminated with lead. And that is because the 18 months that we were on the Flint River water, the untreated water, it significantly damaged our infrastructure. So you can think of it as drinking through a lead painted straw. Chips of lead scale from our pipes continue to come off um, into the drinking water and in, into, our, into our tap. The Department of Environmental Quality and other government agencies initially denied there was a problem. They're now working with scientists from Virginia Tech who helped uncover this crisis. There's really a comprehensive response in Flint and I think the last time I checked with it, we've taken over 38,000 samples in Flint which I'll say is probably the most tested water system at least in this country. I know it is in the state. But that's a little comfort to a community that doesn't know when they'll have clean drinking water again. And the trust is gone. For a year and a half, residents were told water like this was safe, even though it looked, smelled, and tasted bad. According to the Michigan Attorney General, state employees tried to cover up warning signs of lead poisoning. When you're talking about government, the trust was broken, and that's something that's really difficult and hard to repair. We have kids now that are suffering the consequences of ingesting lead contaminated water, or, or, or pregnant women that were ingesting this water. It was a local pediatrician who brought the crisis to public attention by analyzing blood data from Flint children last summer. So our research showed that in the city of Flint, which is divided into nine wards, that percentage of kids with elevated lead levels doubled after the water switch. And in some neighborhoods, it was even higher. It actually tripled. This is something that we may have to deal with for decades, if not generations to come. There's research on the epigenetic impacts of lead, where your environment impacts your genetics. Mothers exposed to lead, you can see the DNA changes in their grandchildren. Lead poisoning shows no symptoms, but it results in IQ loss, behavioral problems, and learning disabilities in children. It can harm every organ in the body, especially the central nervous system. And there's another worry that has deadly consequences. This is not just a lead crisis. The Flint water crisis is, is much more than that. Um, Legionella, we had the largest outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in the country during this water crisis, and 12 people died, I mean, because of that. And that could have been entirely preventable. Legionnaire's is still a major concern. Now there's been a significant increase in shigellosis, an intestinal disease that causes diarrhea and vomiting. Generally blamed on poor hygiene habits, it can also be transmitted through contaminated drinking water. And then the kale is in the bottom. And then, do you want me to put some hot sauce on it? So yes. Making a meal isn't the routine it used to be for Melissa Mays and her family. Now, it involves bottled water, lots of it. They won't take chances. The water may have been switched back, but this is what has come out of their taps since. According to Melissa, the family was otherwise healthy before the water crisis hit. Since then, the Mays have all suffered from rashes and much more. At first, it was the hair loss and muscle pain and bone pain. Also, my neurologist believes that I have a lot of copper stored in my brain, and that's what's causing the seizures and the tremors. Our youngest, Cole, um, his white blood cell count hovers around four. So he has little to no immune system. He gets sick so easily. And Christian, our middle child, has so much pain. He has a hard time walking. 
and they have physical therapy three times a week because lead can be seen and stored in your growth plates. So when Christian hit a four inch growth spurt, his body didn't stretch with him. His, his bones grew, but his muscles and his joints did not. Okay, now remember, you're going to cross one ankle over the other, and then that's right, push up with your bottom leg, all the way forward and back. You do it 25 times per side. Me and my friends make like flit water jokes, like what, what would be the most uh, dangerous weapon in, for a cop to have? A water gun with flit water in it. So we kept on making those jokes, and we realized how bad it actually was. Okay, Christian, um, arms straight back on the floor, palms up, hold for five seconds. It's actually gotten worse over time because the stuff's still there. The lead and copper and all the other bad chemicals, which I can't name since there's so many, are still there. The maze try to limit exposure as much as possible. They want to avoid absorbing toxins through the skin or breathing them in. So they take speed showers now. We've got chloroform coming through in our shower, which is what causes headaches, dizziness. It can cause cancer, cause gastrointestinal distress, which my husband deals with on a constant basis. So they test their water regularly with both the government and independent organizations. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid of the water. You know, you shouldn't be afraid of your tap water. You know, I'm afraid of it. There's a lot of people afraid of it. Soon they'll have the results of the latest sample back from the Department of Environmental Quality. The Mays family are part of a class action suit, along with others, who say they've displayed a range of serious conditions. But some of the most common complaints seen around the city are hair loss and skin problems. And recorded cases are now in the hundreds. I know there's been increased people with rashes. There's no doubt in my mind. I don't have a water test, we don't have a water test uh, that shows us a culprit, a one culprit we can go after. Several things we know. The dermatologists have not found any basis of infection in the water. These rashes do not look like they were caused by a bacteria or a virus. The whole city has been traumatized by this crisis. Mari's weekly tumbling class allows Three, some relief for the kids here. Four, Many of five, these families were also exposed six, to lead in the water supply. Seven, nine, and they feel abandoned. Maya. Come on, they need to fix the whole system. They did it in other states. They can do it here in Flint. They, they act like we really don't count. That is the impression that I get, that Flint people don't count. Five, six, seven, eight. They tell us that it's okay to do to bathe in it. It's not. And people are fed up, really, because of all the lies that were told to us about the water situation. And we just try to deal the best we can. We just kind of bind together as a community and just work together. Push, 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 push. Yes, up. Sheila Miller Graham runs the dance studio. She lives in the water zone and is a lifelong Flint resident. I have great hopes that things are going to improve. I'm a believer in Flint. You know, I'm a Flintstone. I'm a diehard. We're that strong rock. And so um, that whole saying is what don't kill you makes you stronger. We're definitely getting stronger. We don't want to be the guinea pigs, you know, for the rest of our lives. But we definitely want something done and we want it done now. Mari is known around town as Little Miss Flint. Worried about what her community was going through, she wrote to President Obama to appeal for help. Mr. President, hello, my name is Mari Copany. I'm eight years old. I live in Flint, Michigan. I am one of the children that is affected by this water, and I have been doing my best to march and protest and speak up for all the kids that here live in Flint. In May, the president came to Flint to meet Mari. How are you? Yes. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? <laughs> you doing okay? Good. Yeah, you, you doing know, Miss Flint. I want to you. I know. That's why I decided to come. And I'm going to talk about you in my speech, all the good work you're doing. <laughs> like a lot of you, uh, 
Murray's been worried about what happened here in Flint. She's worried about what it means for children like her. She's worried about the future of this city and this community. I will not rest, and I'm going to make sure that the leaders at every level of government don't rest until every drop of water that flows to your homes is safe to drink and safe to cook with and safe to bathe in, because that's part of the basic responsibilities of a government in the United States of America. But little has changed since the president's visit. If anything, the permanence of their situation has set in. This is Flint's water distribution warehouse. There's 1.3 million liters here at any one time. That's about nine days worth of water for the community. It gets constantly replenished as cases are shipped out to what they call pods, or points of distribution. But the only full-scale solution to get people off bottled water is to replace the infrastructure. Today, we find the mayor doing an unexpected spot check on her fast start pipe replacement program. I just have to keep going back to we need, we need new pipes. That's the only thing that's going to ease the mind of the people and um, let them trust that it's safe again. These workmen are replacing the city's service lines. Those are the pipes that run from the roads to the houses and there's a lot of lead. But so far, Fast Start has been a slow process. Look, I'm frustrated. I live here. <laughs> I have bad water, so I'm a frustrated person as well. To date, only 218 service lines have been replaced. There are more than 15,000 in the city needing to be done. And that doesn't even include all the other pipes in the system. The mayor is a Democrat. She blames the Republican-controlled Congress for the delay. They're holding it up, and that needs to get passed. We need those funds. We didn't do, do anything to deserve to be in this situation, but we certainly deserve the money to be able to fix it, because you have a, a community of people that still can't just turn on their water faucet and drink the water. And as the lines are pulled out of the ground and replaced, more lead is dislodged, causing spikes in the system which is one of the many reasons the DEQ urges people to use filters. You need to make sure that A, you take care of the lead issue, B, you take care of the chlorine byproducts, C, you maintain chlorine residual so you don't have microbial contamination. You need to make sure people are using filters as, you move, as you're removing service lines. So it's okay to bathe and cook with the water if it's filtered? Uh, that's my opinion. If you lived here and you had children, would you allow them to carry on like that? Yes, I, I would if, if, if my kids and grandkids were here. Relative to bathing, not a problem. Relative to cooking, that'd be okay. We're, and once again, we talk about filters. I am convinced that filters work. Melissa and Adam Mays are not so convinced. And they won't risk their family's health especially after the latest government test results found hanging on their front door. Federal standards say lead should not exceed 15 parts per billion. It says, sorry we missed you, but you've tested high for lead or copper, and sure enough, we have 160 parts per billion of lead. That's not okay when zero, zero is the only safe level for my kids. So we're never going to trust the filters because who knows what we have coming in from the city. And what, what's 160 parts per billion today might be double that tomorrow. The maize took their sample from the water meter outside their house, which means the lead is coming from the city supply, not their inside plumbing. The bacteria tests, I almost cried. Uh, the lead, I just stood on my front porch and I was like, all right then. Great, we're going in the wrong direction still, and science is screaming this, and yet these same people who sent these, uh, put these results on my door sat in a classroom uh, about two weeks ago telling us that 
the water is the best it's been in 30 years and that everybody should, should trust the filters. Despite residents' fears, state officials are confident the water quality is improving. We've been testing since January, but the water is even better now than it was in January in terms of lead, copper, pH, chlorine, and all of that. Um, the disinfectant byproducts are the same as they would be in any other city in the United States, if not any, any country that uses chlorine or any system that uses chlorine. Everybody's sick. Everybody's mad. Everybody's because of this crisis, Melissa is transformed into a vocal activist and is often at the forefront of protests. Residents are demanding answers from Governor Rick Snyder. He appointed the emergency manager who made the decision to switch the water back in 2014. We want to know who knew what and when they knew it and have people held accountable at all different levels. So I think there is more to come. Lulu and Mari live on the other side of town from the maze. They're still waiting for their latest test results from the Department of Environmental Quality. For now, Mari and the rest of the family are playing it safe. They'll continue to use only bottled water for as long as it takes. What was initially done to save five million dollars could, by some estimates, end up costing over a billion and take at least a decade to fix. The people of Flint are traumatized. They feel betrayed. Every agency that was supposed to protect them failed. Um, and they very much want to know why um, and how this could have happened uh, and to, to begin the process of healing. Um, so you can always almost think of it like a truth and reconciliation process. It's a confidence issue. And it will be um, a fair bit of time before we get that back with residents in Flint, Michigan.